How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I want to share with you what I found at the Tampa RV Show. They're, they're known for releasing new things, new products, new RVs. So today, I'm going to take you around and show you some of the things. The new technology, the new products that are hitting the market, some new and interesting RVs that are somewhat different than the rest of the field. Now, starting off, after going through the RV show for a few days and looking for those things that stand out, one thing that I was surprised actually hasn't hit the market until this year as a, a new product is the LumaSafe. This is a technology that's been around for a while, but this is the first time that it's being implemented for RV. So it's a UVC light that goes inside of your AC and it's going to help fight against the algae, the bacteria, the mold, the mildew, the things that grow in this moist area. I think this is a, a great idea because that is a moist area when you're using your AC. It's going to have that condensation build up on it. And so all those things, this is where they're going to want to naturally grow and that all that air has to pass through there. So if you can greatly reduce it and kill those things as it's passing by or sitting on that evaporator, it's gonna make the air quality inside of the RV much better. This is good for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's gonna be healthier air to breathe on the inside of the RV. We definitely want less mold, less mildew, less of this algae buildup, but it's also gonna be good for your AC because if that stuff's not growing and clogging the evaporator on the AC, it's gonna run more efficient and better. This would have actually helped us out this last summer because we had some algae buildup in that tray below the evaporator coils and where that needs to drain out and drain to the outside, that drain hole plugged. And so I had to get up there and clean it out because all that moisture started pouring onto the inside of the RV. Our AC wasn't leaking. It was that that condensation off that evaporator coil couldn't make it to the outside because we had algae that was growing in that tray. So this is something that would solve that problem. Now, the next thing, I'm really eager to get my hands on it because Battleborn did an announcement down in Tampa at night and they, they were releasing their new intelligent line of batteries. So they're gonna be adding intelligence to the, the batteries that they have been making. So the new batteries will, will be having this intelligence built into them and they came out with a new battery, the Wing. We'll talk more about the wing in a minute, but they're not the first ones to put Bluetooth inside of a battery, but just having Bluetooth in a battery doesn't really do a whole lot for you. You can check each individual battery inside of your battery bank, but having those be able to communicate is where the new technology is really coming in. They're creating a mesh network in your system. It's gonna help with setup. It's gonna really help out with troubleshooting, but it's also gonna help the, the battery bank work effectively because there can be some imbalance when you're using batteries in a battery bank and they're gonna know where they're at in that system so you can have this whole mesh network working together. So I'm pretty eager, I hope to be able to get my hands on this because I wanna see how it ties into everything else. The way that I understand it is they have the hub, they have different components, and this is really just the beginning, but it, the way that I see it, it should be able to tie into some of the other smart components in our system with our inverter. So very promising technology from here, and it should really help things out and make things more, more simple, more efficient, and easier to troubleshoot. And the wing is really going to be good for RVers. It has selectable voltage. So this is one of the first batteries where we're going to be able to choose whether you want to use 48 or if you want to use 12 volt. So it gives you that, that range of what you would like to use that battery for. And you can also scale these up. So it's designed to be for a home backup. It can be used in the RV industry. It can also be used in the marine industry. Should give you the, the safety and the alerts that meet those criteria for the ABYC 13. So the standards that this is built at is, is quite high. And when you get into these larger battery banks, into these larger systems, and you're tying multiple batteries together, there can be an issue with the, the all the batteries balancing or becoming imbalanced. So this has a hybrid balancing system. So active and passive, that's a new technology that we've never seen before in batteries. So I'm eager to see how that plays out. This is just some of that technology that kind of rose to the top to kind of stand out from the, the rest of the stuff at the RV show. But there's also just acres and acres of RVs to walk through and check out. So here's something new for this year. Brinkley, it's a new line of RVs, actually a new company that's producing RVs. So let's check those out. 
Now the Brinkley RV is interesting to me for a couple of reasons. Number one, I, I like the idea that the owners are actually taking these out. They're building the prototypes, they're taking their families on a road trip and they're testing out, see what works and what didn't work and what went wrong and what needs to change before these have actually gone to market. So I, I like the idea that the owners are actually getting in there and trying them out themselves. Now, currently they have two models and it really seems like they're they're trying to shine in an area where they're having more accessible storage or different types of storage around the RV. You, you'll see that as we kind of go through this entire RV. Even that, that front bay on the fifth wheel, you can see that the legs are actually wider. So those legs show up where the access for the propane is rather than being on that inside front storage. So you don't have those legs in there taking up that space. So it gives you a little bit wider stance and it gives you more storage in that front bay. So that's kind of a, a win-win in that situation. Great idea. The big pass-through storage area actually has a little access door, so if you need to get to the plumbing and electrical, it's nice that you don't have to like unscrew anything there. You can just slide a door back and you can access that area in that pass-through. The big pass-through storage on the toy hauler, it was, it was one, massive, and number two, it had these doors that you can put up or they would swing down and be divider walls in there. So if you wanted to have a divided storage in the front and then have the pass-through go through, or if you had something bigger that you wanted to open up that entire area to store something larger, you have the options to be able to store what you wanted in there. I haven't seen that before in an RV. And in that front storage, you had an area below it where you could have your inverter and your batteries and your dual fuel inverter generator that's mounted inside of this toy hauler. They also had large pullouts that was below that pass-through storage area, so you could have more storage underneath there. The secret storage that I saw next to that, not really a secret, but it's a little tiny fridge. So you open up that bay and you could put some drinks in there or whatever you wanted to, just a small small little fridge that you could access from outside of the RV. And with it being a toy hauler, it also had the fuel in the back, but it also had an onboard air compressor, which would probably come in really handy with that type of an RV. Another thing is their seals are different. They said that their seals and their seams are gonna be more of a, a seal like the automotive industry. So uh, they wouldn't tell me exactly what it is. I would love to be able to find out, but I'm assuming it's not the butyl tape and the caulking on the outside. It's more of an automotive finish for those seals and seams. I'm sure we'll get to find out what that is eventually, but for now they're keeping that under wraps. They had some nice touches on this RV. The electrical was on a reel, the water line was on a reel also, so all that retracts inside of the RV before you move. I appreciated the interiors of the RVs as well. I liked the style that they went with, how it was bright, it felt open. Um, they, were, they were nice on the inside and the little cubbies that they had on the inside didn't stop on the outside. They have more stuff, so you could have the knives that pulled down, you could have the utensils that would pull down. It had a really large pantry where you could pull that out and then you could pull out drawers from there. So so that would have a, a massive amount of food storage. And they also had a spice rack that could pull out. So lots of great storage inside of here. They even had the island that could turn into a peninsula. So if you wanted more counter space, you could pull up the edge of that island and give you a lot more counter space with that peninsula. They also had a pull out for a water dish and a food dog bowl. They had storage for shoes underneath the stairs and the windows were unique on this. It's a different style of window and it also has day and night shades kind of built right into it. And they're, they're very streamlined on the inside. It looks really nice around the windows. Overall, I was impressed. It's a nice new twist on things. and I'm, I'm eager to see how some of these things hold up in the long run for the RV industry. The RVs on display right next to them, ATC, they're not brand new this year, but they are definitely different from the rest of the competition that's out there. When you go through the RVs, it seems like you see a lot of repetitive things out there. They don't try and repeat anything out there because their RVs, their toy haulers, have no wood in them whatsoever, no wood anywhere. So you're getting away from the wood, the staples, the putty, just the normal way of construction that we are come to know in RVing, theirs don't have any of that. They have a single sheet of metal that goes all the way across these toy haulers. So it's it's not a, a rubber membrane. It's not the normal way of doing things, but I imagine these RVs would last for a long time. So you're gonna see an elevated price on RVs like this, but those that don't want the normal or kind of complain about the way RVs are built, these are the answer to that. You're gonna pay a little bit more, but there is an answer to having a different type of construction in an RV. That's why ATC kind of stood out to me this year. I know I said everything was metal. I, I believe the walls were actually Asdell, but they don't have any wood, no wood in their construction. Pretty, pretty impressive and different. Now, one of the last things that stood out to me besides the spacecraft RV that had extendable solar panels off the roof, 
that that was impressive in itself, a very custom build, but uh, a simple product that is out there is an inflatable kayak. This one caught my eye because it's much more rigid than any of the other inflatable kayaks that are out there. It'll deflate and pack away pretty small, not quite as small as the inflatable paddle boards that they had there, but still relatively small where it'd be easy to store it inside of the RV. And it, it was more rigid, so you can have your foot pegs, your adjustable foot pegs on there, and it's actually going to give you some support in there. So a lot of people when they go kayaking, they like those foot pegs because it'll help them paddle and help them feel secure inside of the kayak. So having this rigid of a, a kayak that feels more like the, the paddle board with walls, it, it was an impressive unit. So definitely something new that I have never seen before. I believe it's a company out of Michigan and uh, I, I liked seeing something like this come for RVers that love to be able to get out on the water. Great, great solution for that. So I think that's gonna do it for today. Like I said, this show is just massive. You can walk around it for days and just continue seeing RVs and products and new things all the time. But these are the things that kind of came to the top that I thought stood out from the rest that were either unique, new, or a different perspective. So I think that's gonna do it for today. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. If we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.